Hello there. This is the Microphone Man from the Modesto Radio Museum website. And this is the story of one of the most iconic made-in-the-USA microphones, the Shure Unidyne Model 55 series. The Unidyne was built to address problems created by feedback, background noise, and reverberation. Shure engineer Benjamin Bauer is credited with being the driving force behind the creation of the first Unidyne. Bauer began developing the microphone early in 1937. He wanted to create a unidirectional microphone which used a single dynamic element. Prior to the Unidyne, the most common way to create a microphone with unidirectional response was to use an omnidirectional element combined with a bidirectional unit in the same housing. The two signals were electrically combined in equal proportions. The results yielded a cardioid, or unidirectional pattern. Bauer simplified the design by using just one element, the rugged dynamic unit, using Schur's proprietary uniphase technology. This method used an acoustic principle that a series of front and rear openings allowed sound waves to reach both sides of the element's diaphragm. The sound waves reaching the diaphragm from the rear had a longer path and passed through openings which produced a time delay between the sound entering from the rear and sound waves striking the front of the diaphragm. By varying the amounts of acoustical resistance encountered at the rear openings, Bauer was able to achieve a true cardioid or unidirectional pattern of pickup using a single element. This gave a microphone that could pick up and reproduce the sound you want as you want it to discriminate from unwanted sounds, free from feedback, audience and background noise, room reflection and reverberation. The advantages of the unidirectional microphone embodied in the original Unidyne remain today as the solution of choice in many difficult sound pickup and reinforcement situations. During the years between 1939 and 1946, the Unidyne remained largely the same. Changes to the line were included in a special broadcast model called the 556, which had an improved isolation mount of live rubber. An external call letter plate could be purchased separately as an accessory to this unit. Many radio stations used this new broadcast model, including Modesto's first radio station, KTRB. The next generation of Unidynes came in 1951 with the new small Unidyne microphones with an improved cartridge that had better magnet materials, diaphragm suspension, and cartridge isolation, and a smaller, more squarish look. For the first year, both the original Large 55 and the new 55S models were offered. The new small design was available in two model configurations, Model 556S for broadcast and Model 55S for general purpose. Like standard Unidynes, the small Unidynes were also equipped with a multi-impedance selector switch. Today, the microphone is almost outwardly identical to the 1951 version. Other than modifications made to the mounting base in 1962 and the elimination of the multi-impedance switch in the late 1970s, the only other visible changes made were to the material lining the housing, which started out as a reddish-brown silk in the earliest models, was changed to blue, then black, and finally to black foam. By virtue of its status, the 55 series has led an exciting life. It helped to define different eras and enjoyed front-row seating at noteworthy events of all descriptions. Some highlights from its illustrious history include the day crooner Rudy Valley scrapped his quaint but old-world megaphone and switched to a Unidyne. He became the first prominent entertainer to adopt the technology for live performances. General Douglas MacArthur had a sure Unidyne along with other mics of the time on the deck of the USS Missouri during the ceremonies which ended the war with Japan in 1945. You don't have to look closely to see the Unidyne in the famous photo of President Harry S. Truman holding up the erroneous newspaper headline reading, Dewey Defeats Truman. JFK was frequently photographed making speeches with the stylish, chrome-plated microphone stand-mounted in front of him. The film Good Morning Vietnam, starring Robin Williams, made the Unidyne its virtual co-star. The microphone was also seen in print ads and posters for the film across the U.S. 
1994, the U.S. Postal Service issued six stamps, which featured the Unidine. One of them was the 29-cent Elvis stamp. The list of major entertainers who used or are still using Unidines would probably fill two thick volumes. Just a smattering of name-dropping from the complete list includes Tony Bennett, Red Skelton, Buddy Guy, Dinah Shore, Groucho Marx, and of course Elvis Presley. The Unidine basic principle has carried on in the more modern-look mics like Shure's SM57 and SM58, two of the most used microphones in stage vocal and instrumental sound pickup today. So there you have it, the Unidyne 55 series of microphones and their successors, all in use down to this very day. A story of innovative American engineering and design that has been adopted all over the world. I'm Gary Avey, with assistance from Mark Avey. Thanks for watching. Please join us at ModestoRadioMuseum.org.